Welcome into the lounge. We have a big time guest who I've been looking to hear from uh, this offseason. We've been waiting on this interview. We've got second year outside linebacker Jalen Ferguson joining the lounge today. So really looking forward to that interview. Yeah, absolutely. Jalen's one of the guys who's going to be a really important piece of this team, um, of this defense. And, and you saw, we've got a taste of it during his rookie season, um, but there's going to be a lot more on his plate this year, and, and I'm looking forward to see what he can do. So uh, let's go ahead like, and welcome, what's that? Oh, I was going to say, he kind of keeps a low profile. That's like, he does. We haven't like, talked about him. All, that Everybody's talking about Miles Boykin and everything, you know, maybe it's stepping into a starting role. Jalen Ferguson in his second year, it's important. Yeah, he does. He kind of keeps that low profile. We haven't heard from him this offseason. He hasn't done any interviews or anything like that. So let's go ahead without any further ado and welcome in Jalen and talk to him about what to expect this year. Well, we are thrilled to be joined by Ravens outside linebacker Jalen Ferguson. And Jalen, I got to start with this. You know, everybody's you know been on COVID lockdown for a while. You're sack daddy. You have two young kids. What does sack daddy daycare look like for you? Uh, honestly, at first it was pretty fun and then like about mid june july i just started throwing crackers in the floor and just just let me have the time of my life you know just have a good time uh, i tried to do the school thing at first you know school let out early try to teach at the little bit it's like daddy daycare daddy day camp <laughs> wait cracker crackers in the pool so soggy crackers uh, my my kids love my my little boy my son my oldest son he like pickles so i like oh. pickle in the cup and he go away. And then my daughter, we've been trying to get her to walk the whole quarantine, and she recently started walking. So, uh, you know, the house is on fire right now. But I'm in camp, so I got to do it. Yeah, you're the, ha- you're the happiest man to be in camp right now. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So what did uh, Jalen? What did the last few months look like for you? Like, wh- how did you spend the off season? Uh, you know, where were you? Where is home for you in the off season? I spent a little time in Louisiana, but I spent most of my time out here in Baltimore, just because I didn't want to get, I don't want to go nowhere and get stuck or get a case of the COVID and can't report it back or couldn't bear to play. Most of my time is spent like indoors. Like I seen a lot of my kids. Like during the season, you know, you always like I can't wait to the all season and I see my kids. I get to be around the family. This year we had like a double all season. We had all season. <laughs> we had the COVID season. So it was good hanging out with everybody at first. Then it started to get a little, you know, a little pushy. And then <laughs> a little more. But hey, we're back around guys now. So uh, yeah. It, basically, by the end of it, you're like, I need to go back to work. I need to be back in the office immediately. I mean, I think everybody else wanted me out the house more than I wanted to be out there. <laughs> that's it's like the unspoken thing i feel like with like parents of little ones right now it's like you're like yeah man I, I love my kids i love being around my kids but you know you know you hit you hit a limit there eventually you know, they are my kids and they gotta be here forever but i rather go work <laughs> so so what did your training look like jalen like how, how did you kind of attack the off season from a training perspective uh, I worked out with one of my teammates up here, actually. You know, we got Zoom meetings and Zoom workouts. So that was the first half of the day. Second half, usually working out on the field, you know, social distancing with the mask on. And the mask got his own challenges back and forth. But, you know, you got to remain disciplined and put the mask on. Who are you um, training with? I'm by myself right now. So, you know, I got a little pass. <laughs> who who are you training with? You said your teammates. Yeah, I train uh, with Mike and Noah. I, I train with uh, Otoro Alaka and Justice Hill, you know, a little bit uh, Aaron and Doye, but he was out of town. But, you know, I had a good all season. I feel like I got some good work. I came back, you know, I'm still here, so I did some good in the all season. Great. So, Jalen, what are you, uh, like, obviously, this is a big year for you, and the Ravens are, are looking at you to play a really significant role. When you look back on, on your rookie season, how do you think you played? What do you think you took away from that year? Uh, I think I played pretty good. <laughs> You know, I thought I picked up toward the end of the season, you know, with a little more, a couple more reps. I had a couple games in my belt. So, you know, I started playing better. And I'm just trying to ride, you know, I'm trying to ride that wave, keep on going up that train, keep my older mentality, you know, don't panic about all these superstars around me. Like, you know, last year, my whole mindset going into the field was I was watching half these guys literally last year. And now I'm out here chasing them. My first start last year was against the Patriots in primetime. I'm like, oh, 
you know, it's Tom Brady. It's, it's Tom Brady and the Patriots right now. <laughs> this year is like everybody's just an opponent, nameless, faceless opponent. And that's the mentality I'm taking to the season. Can you talk, like, what was that week and that moment like for you when you step on the field for your first start? And it is against the Patriots. It is against Brady. He's double your age. You've seen him win all those rings. Like, and you're you're expected to go out there and, and play well and not be intimidated. You know, how, how did you handle that? And what was that game and that week like for you? I mean, that week, I spent a lot of time with, well, I still spent a lot of time with Pernell Matthews. You know, he was kind of preparing me, engaging me for the situation. Like, get me to come out there, just tone it all down, tone down the lights, the noise, and realize that at the end of the day, we all football players on the field. Like, outside the field, you know, we got all this crazy stuff and all these accolades and respect everybody. But on the field, in between the players, we at, are as equal as we're going to get. So why not take advantage of that equalness? Don't let the outside circus fool you. Did you, did you talk any smack to Tom Brady? I don't really talk trash. I barely talk at all, actually. <laughs> you you just let Judon do all that? Yeah, that's what Judah do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like I, the enforcer than a talker. Uh, nice, nice. Uh, you know, it's it's rare that a rookie on defense at all, particularly at outside linebacker with the Ravens, gets as much playing time as you. You know, because I mean, Terrell Suggs has been there for forever taking up a spot, you know, and then Judon. And, and there's just been really good outside linebackers there for a long time. How much does that experience benefit you as you go into year two that you, that you do have some some games and starts under your belt? I mean, it helped me a lot. You know, I ain't got them, you know, especially this year with there not being any preseason games. You know, I ain't got to worry about trying to get the jitters off or being nervous in front of a big crowd of people when I've already been in the moments before. So now I can shrink that moment down and focus on what I need to focus on. And then, you know, hopefully when I my career winds up, I'll be one of the great outside linebackers for Baltimore everybody's talking about. What kind of is the focus for you going into the season? Like, is there a part of, of your game, you know, that, that you really want to see take improvement? I mean, obviously, sacks, you were, you're the all-time college football sack leader. You beat Terrell Suggs, 45 career sacks at La Tech. You know, you had two and a half last year. Is that an area where you say – you know what? It's time for Sack Daddy to start, you know, daddying. Yeah, it's not, you know, that's definitely on my list. You know, I got to get my sacks. I got to earn my name, earn my respect in the league. But at the same time, I don't want me trying to achieve a personal selfish goal to negate the team. So, you know, I really got to take care of my – because the game not just all get down and go up the field, get down and go up the field. It's a game. And I want to stick in it. I want to play with my teammates and be with my teammates. I don't want to – trying to do too much and make you feel like I'm being bigger than the team when I'm actually not. I'm just trying to help the team. And at the same time, I know a lot of guys on this team, like I just mentioned Pernell. Pernell, he very clearly, very blatantly said he won a ring. He came back for a ring. And, you know, I love Fifi. He helped me everything I do. So everything I'm into this year, every moment, every play, every snap, is to get Fifi that ring. Like, I know it sounds a little crazy right now, but mm-hmm. in the locker room on this team, don't worry, right there. Like, that's a million words in one sentence. Mm-hmm. What is it about Purnell that has kind of bonded you guys so much and made you so close and make you feel like you want to go get a ring for him? I mean, it's not just, it's not that like, it's just specifically if he, it's like it's all of it, but specifically with him, he's like, he's been in the room with me literally since day one. And when I came in here, the first person everybody told me, no, well, the coaches told me to get to know was no my vet, Pernell met Fee. And Fee, like, he a Raven. Like, he embodies everything what a Raven is, what any Raven player meant to be. You know, that's a high standard to live up to. So that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, actually, I'm trying to surpass everything. I'm really trying to take over everything he ever done. Mm-hmm. The, you know, we love – Ryan and I love Pernell because he's a dog. Go ahead, give him, give him your dog voice, Ryan. He's a dog. Just let the dog off the chain. Let him <laughs> Gotta let the dog hunt. Let the dog off the chain. <laughs> do, you, like, do, do you get that feeling from Pernell? Like, did you, you – know, I think you got some of that in you too. Like, did, is that something that you could see from the time you first met Oh, him? he's got some dog. Oh, he's got. I know, I know, but he's the he's the pup though. You know, <laughs> Pernell. The Pernell's the he's the pup. Do you got that dog too, Jalen? Yeah, I got a dog in me. But dog ain't gonna stay a pup family. <laughs> but it's good though. I like. I have so much respect in them. 
you know, even my family member got so much respect for Fee and appreciate for everything that he, he did to help me in my career up to this point. And he's still here. Like he has no reason to try to help a second year or a rookie player with his stature, but he still, you know, take the time out of his day to talk to us, help us. You know, we'll go outside right now and work on something right now if he wanted, if I asked him to. And he's just the type of guy he is. And coming into my league my first year, having somebody like that in front of me, made me want to be like that somebody one day. Nice. A, a lot of people, coaches talk about the jump from year one to year two and how that's a really important year in a player's career to kind of to make that jump. Do you look at this as, as a really big year for you to kind of establish yourself and what kind of player you're going to be in your career? Yeah, this definitely is a big year for me. It's year two, you know, and then coming back next year, it'll be my third year, and then I'll be on then my last year on the contract. So this year, I'm really trying to show everybody, like, why I'm here and why you should keep me here. You know, why I want to be in Baltimore. Why can't everybody see my face every day? Why everybody can't see me happy to smile? Let me show them on the field. So I'm physical, you know, I came back this year, better shape, you know, I know the playbook better. I got more vet reps because I played more games last year. So going into the season, just trying to take everything, what I learned last year, put into this season. Just take it all in strides, not make the moment too big, not make the moment too small either because it is a game and I do have a lot on the line. It's going to be a pretty empty stadium though. <laughs> How much do you think the uh, the additions of Derek Wolf and Calais Campbell, and then the you know two rookie inside linebackers like this front seven? You look at it now, and it's loaded. Like, how much do you think all those additions can help can help you kind of take the next step too? Well, with Calais and Wolf in the middle, you know that guarantees me a one on one. I'm so happy because <laughs> respect to them, they earned their respect to the game. They earned a double team that they're gonna take all season. And they get furry one on one. I take that. I take my one on one. <laughs> Jalen, what did you learn about the difference in getting to the quarterback and getting sacks at the NFL level compared to the college level? I learned that hits get you noticed, sacks get you paid. <laughs> like mm-hmm. anybody can get a hit or a pressure. You know, you know, a linebacker or safety can come off the pressure and do that. But when you actually get in sacks and changing the game, that's when your moment get big. And you know, I had Judon on my team. Jude is everything in the pass rush. So he got hits, he got sacks, he got numbers. So he got on one side, and on the other side, yeah, I am sitting with two sacks for him. So I get my, you know, I get my numbers. <laughs> talk about. Do you mm-hmm. do you feel like for you a, a focus during training camp will, is to kind of add to your your pass rush moves, your repertoire, kind of you know, because you're such a big, powerful guy. Like it seems like you know you can kind of you can bull rush some people like. Mm-hmm. Like you can give them that bull rush. Do you feel like it's kind of working those other moves during training camp? Yeah, because I I know right now, like you know, we all know sitting here looking at I'm a big guy. Like I can move my body out the way if I want to. So going to the game, you know I'm a big guy. You don't think and you watch all that shit film, you like, oh he got power. No, I need I gotta develop more, I need a little more sauce in my game. <laughs> a little more sauces. Like you don't know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get some power, you're gonna get some sauce, you might get a little bit of both. And who do you kind of uh, lean on to, to learn some of that, to kind of, you know, fine-tune your craft? Actually, Calais, because, you know, we both tall, and he can relate better than me as a big man, as a tall man. When you come down to it, I'll be with Pinnell, Pinnell, Julian, Tavo, you know, the whole D-line, we all help each other like a three-headed monster. Well, a mm-hmm. five-headed monster. <laughs> Yeah, what did you uh, what did you think when you heard this off season that the Ravens had traded for Calais Campbell and then and then signed Derek Wolf? Were you sitting there getting excited, just thinking about those one on one matchups? Like, what was your reaction that day when you heard the news? Oh, I was happy. One, I never I have met Calais before. But I don't think he remembered meeting me because I was a young guy then, and he was like the giant walking around in New Orleans. So just coming up to him and seeing him in person, like, oh, okay. <laughs> It's true, and then meeting Wolf, you know, there's Derek Wolf, like his name carries weeks around everywhere he goes, and then seeing him in person, actually seeing that work ethic, seeing that it's not like a facade, it's not like he just out here getting all this money he's not putting in work for. He worked, like Wolf worked hard, Claire worked hard, and they older guys, so to me, it's like, I'm not letting them old guys make me look bad, so I'm going to work harder. 
-hmm. and just the, the competition that came with them to they brought that energy to this team. What What's the story where you met Calais when you were like, how old were you? What's the story behind that? I was at uh, Louisiana Tech. We was at the New Orleans Bowl. My it's like my red shirt freshman year because I was in the game. We had played Arkansas State. And he was walking around on Bourbon Street with a hood on. And like, oh, you can let us come. Now he's so big and his voice so deep, he can't really whisper. So he's like, oh, oh, yeah, that's Calais. That's Calais. <laughs> but now you don't want to be like a star. You don't want to go trying to be like a star groupie or nothing. But still, that's, that's Calais Campbell. Like, I'm the tallest person around, but I look it up to him. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. Have you have you uh, have you reminded him of that story since he's been on the team? Nah, he don't remember that. I don't even <laughs> remember that. That's amazing. That's amazing. But I look forward to making a lot of new memories this year with him. And this year should be every year he'd be like, "Oh yeah, I remember her. I remember her." <laughs> you got the impression down. I like that. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> hey Jalen, how much how much do you like? Kind of carry like you know you are you set that college sack record you know you top Terrell Suggs I mean that's that's a big deal how much do you kind of carry that on your your back and say like all right you know I'm the all time college sacks leader I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in the NFL now I mean I carry it but at the same time since I've been in the league I learned that this is uh, what have you done for me not or what have you done for me recently in the league like, I can lean and harp on that. I did all this stuff in college but. I came to the league, I really haven't done those type of things yet. So to me, it's like, that was good then, but I gotta do better now. Like that was college and this is literally the next level. So let me do what I did in college on this level. Until then, I don't really have that much to talk about. Yeah, we talked just a little bit earlier about the, the history of outside linebackers. Is that something that is significant to you? Like when you look at the history of outside linebackers, there's Terrell Suggs, obviously, but then you have guys like Zadaria Smith and Pernell McPhee. And like, there's a long history of these guys. Peter um, Bullware. Yeah, Bullware. I mean, if you want to go even further back. Right, right. And the guys that have gotten big contracts um, have been really successful. Like how aware are you of that? Were you of that? And uh, how much is that like a motivating thing for you? I mean, it's actually, you know, that's a lot. That thought was on my mind a lot because at Louisiana Tech, you know, one of the best, one of the original outside linebackers, Fred Dean, came straight from Louisiana Tech. One, I'm talking about a guy who ran full speed at a tree, and the way he bent his corners is to, you know, for a quick second. So that's my history coming into this program. When I got here, looking around, walking around, looking at the wall, I see Doom, I see Suge, I see Bullwer, I see Z, V. Judah and like all these, all these names in my head started whirling because now I'm one of them. You know, now I'm in the mix of one of them outside linebackers from Baltimore. But when you mention the outside linebacker from Baltimore, it's a certain, it's certain characteristics, it's certain trademarks that come with them people. And, you know, I fit in, I feel like I'm starting to fit in that mode, but I'm not there yet. And mm -hmm. going into this training camp, when it actually gets started good, that's my goal is to fit in that mode and then break it. And set a mold for her. So now you're about to fit in my mold. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll let you go on this one, Jalen. But last question for you is just how much better is Jalen Ferguson in 2020 than you were in 2019? What should people expect? Oh, uh, man, I wish I could go back and talk to my past self and tell me it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going into it right now. I feel like, you know, the world on fire and I'm the only one with a bottle of water. <laughs> I was going crazy. I was, it was breaking me down. I, I hit. A little rookie wall, you know, I had pity on myself. I'm like, I just got here. I highly expect me to learn all this stuff. And now I'm like, I want more, put more on my plate. How I'm going to complain about that. How I'm going to complain about a full plate when I've been starving before. That's my mentality going into it. Nice. Cool, man. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on the field, dude. Oh, yeah. There you go. Stay safe, Jalen. Stay <laughs> safe. <laughs> awesome man thank you well good stuff from jalen ferguson i don't you know you called him a puppy dog i don't know how much he liked being called the pup <laughs> well in comparison to pernell you know <laughs> pernell he's the old dog he's the dog's dog <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah he was really good like 
he I, the the similarities between him and Purnell are, are striking um I think yeah. and I think it's really cool that they have that special relationship that Purnell's taken him under his wing and we talk about like not to make this a Purnell podcast but when the Ravens signed Purnell and when they brought him back this year, we talked all along about how it was to to do exactly what he's doing, to mentor a guy like Jalen Ferguson, to show yeah. young players what it means to be a Raven. And he's and he's doing that, and it's clear that, like, it's not just lip service. It's making an impact on a young player. Um, and it's, like, it's truly passing that, like, Ravens tradition down from, from one generation to the next. For sure. And uh, I think that says a lot about Purnell. And, and Jalen is someone who's clearly embracing that message and embrace, embracing that tradition. I think it's – he knows his, his – Ravens football history and that means something to him him and I think that that I think that says a lot about Jalen yeah it definitely does and I think uh you know it'll say a lot about this Ravens defense if we get some some more sacks out of the sack daddy you know, right we kind of referenced it I mean the Ravens are 21st in the league in sacks last year with 37 as a team that was really you know they got a lot of pressure but they brought a lot of blitzes right and so if Wink doesn't have to blitz as much now Wink's Wink's gonna blitz let's just be clear about yeah. that that's who Wink Martindale is. But if he doesn't have to blitz quite as much, you know, because Jalen and these other guys, Calais, Derek Wolf, you know, Bowser, all these guys, you know, if they're getting more pressure with those one-on-ones that Jalen talked about, <laughs> then now all of a sudden you, you have more opportunities for interceptions. You can drop more people in coverage. Like, it just makes you a better defense. I think that's the way – this Ravens defense, I expect to take another step forward. They're already a really good defense last year. They're going to be even better this year, I think, because of players like Jalen Ferguson maturing, because of the additions made in the front seven. That's going to create more, just more pass rush without having to bring as many blitzes. Yeah, I mean, this defense could be scary good. Like yeah. the addition of Calais Campbell and Derek Wolf. I mean, you can see that Jalen's fired up about getting one-on-one matchups. Yeah. Um, and and Judon's a premier pass rusher. So, and I've as I've said before, I think Tyus Bowser, he's playing for a contract. I think he's mm-hmm. going to have a really strong season. So. They're going to get after guys, and I think the Ravens probably have, probably have the best secondary in the NFL. They do have the best secondary in the NFL. Mm, yeah. So there's not a weak spot on this defense, and uh, just with continued development of someone like Jalen, it's going to make a difference. So what's the, what's the number of sacks for him this year? Ooh, all right. I'm going. Uh, I'm going with six. Yeah, I, I think, think he's I, in that six to eight range. Yeah, I think I think that's the kind of the floor is I think six. Yeah, that's that's the magic number. Like, I think he could get more than that, but I, that's kind of the magic number. I would say is six. Yeah, I I would agree with that. That was the number that I had in my head too, right around there. Um, because you're gonna have I don't know, you know, Calais Campbell could get eight. Judon could get right. eleven. You know, Tyus. We keep talking about hey, he could get could he get eight? Um, right. And so all of a sudden you're looking at a whole bunch of sacks right there. So yeah. uh, that's a pretty good thing for this defense. So um, look, we it's a uh, training camp just to kind of update fans on where we stand right now. Training camp's underway, but it's a ramp up process. Typically guys get here for training camp. They put on the pads in two days. They're out there having full practices. Obviously it's a unique year. So there's a, a ramp up process. So rookies have been out there on the field uh, practicing a little bit this week. They've got helmets on They're not in full pads or anything, but then over the course of the next days and weeks, we're going to get the veterans out there there um and then the, the full like traditional training camp practice that's not going to be until august 17th so that's still a couple of weeks away um so we're we haven't actually really seen these guys on the field yet so i know a lot of people are like who looks good how's the team looking you know who are these who, who's gonna start we're gonna have to wait and see these guys on the field but that's gonna come on august 17th this is also a good time to remind people let you know if you haven't heard already we're gonna do a live uh, daily training camp show once those practices are taking place. Uh, That's when I come out, out of the bunker. I'm going to come out of the bunker finally. Yeah, for that you're going to get some fresh air. You're going to get <laughs> some fresh right. air. This is the only room I've lived in for the past four months. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like the, one of the only people here in the building. It's there's not many people around here, so uh, we'll see each other face to face for the first time in you know six months. Wow. Um, but yeah, from that's the only distance. downside. From yeah, a distance. That's, um, yeah, from a distance, I'll wave to you on the practice field. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so that's where things stand, and that's when we'll get a chance to really start seeing these guys get after it. Um, but also, we love to hear from you guys, so send in emails all the time. Uh, you can email us at the lounge at ravens.nfl.net and uh, let us know what questions you have. And again, once we see these guys on the field, we'll be able to talk some more specifics uh, about position battles and all that. Well, thanks for listening. We'll be back with you next week.